Yo, what's up squad? I'm going to be going over these patch notes with you right now real quick cuz uh it's the mid-season patch and everything has changed. So, uh let's get right into it so it's not a 45 minute long video. Bunch of skins, you can pause the video and look at them. They're pretty cool. Um but a bunch of them are weeb skins and I'm not a fan of especially that. I don't like that. Okay, um <clears throat> miscellaneous out of the following gods to AI matches. So now if you want to fuck with any of these gods and AIs uh, on like easy or medium difficulty, you can. I got some new skins in the mixer store if you watch that. I don't because I'm on Twitch. Um, got some bug fixes here. Nothing really too important. Again, with the bug switches or bug fixes. Uh, I can start a gamepad only console match. That's weird. I don't know. Uh, friend referral is not working. Okay. Got like just giving boosters even if you didn't own everything. Okay. Uh, fixed player closes the store after purchasing a Chronos pendant and reopens it. I don't know what that's about. Uh, Assault Phoenix is displaying incorrect colors for order and chaos. That's actually probably a little bit annoying. So that's good. Update learn glossary to in include hard displacement. Oh, I, hard displacement, I guess, as. Um, like a CC, maybe like Horror Assault, probably. Fix the clan store chest, not updating properly after purchasing is made. Clan tab and returns. Uh, fixed end of match lobby online stats. Taking you to incorrect website. That's weird. I've never, I don't think I've ever clicked that literally ever in my life. Rank you timers display SOO instead of timer one in safe mode. Okay. Uh, so that's about it. So. <laughs> Achilles we got here. I wish this wasn't here this table of contents, but whatever Fix an issue where his second fire of this ability uh, His three by the way was going on cooldown earlier than intended. That's good. That's really good because I can tell you a couple times where <clears throat> Actually, it might have even been in my most recent Achilles game where I was like in the middle of dashing and it stopped me from dashing because the cooldown ended so yeah that's really good. It's just audio for a Wheelix. <laughs> this was so good. This is a visual bug. I wish they didn't fix it because it was really good. Um, decrease the percentage chance that Kernanos will make a sound when firing his basic attacks. Because every basic... It was like he's in a tennis match. That's good. That was freaking annoying. Uh, passive meter from calculating a 50% health to mannequin... Rather than 20%. Okay. Uh, missing sounds for fists. Closing an aerial assault. That was actually really good. I was I was really annoyed when I played Hera and my one would close, but it wouldn't make a sound effect or it would make the sound effect too early. So that's really good. I'm glad they fixed that. I never had a problem with this, but I'm sure it's probably the same thing as the, uh, as the Achilles. Really annoying. Allies who are in the landing area also receive a shield. Okay. Uh, updated multiple audio effects. That's fine. Fixed an issue where Giannis could be permanently silenced if Zington uses ultimate before and en entering portal. That's crazy. I never knew that. Uh, why didn't they take Giannis out of the game? Because that seems like a pretty big issue. Um, out of bounds in the Joust map. Uh, Deathbringer skin from the Pendragon Grunt sound when performing Twin Cleave. Hot fix previous fix an issue where Blizzard would continue damaging. Yeah, that's why he was. That's why Merlin was out of the game. Uh, Set is going to be on here too for like the same issue. Where lock would stay on your mirror if he was casting ultimate. Oh, you could lock your mirror in place apparently with shadow lock. That's weird. Even if he was alting from T posing. <laughs> Scylla fix terror of the deep crush projectile. Um and then set, yeah, sandstorm would continue damaging even after they left the area. It's the same thing as that um as that Merlin thing. So now that we got all the hot fixes out, let's go into some actual changes. Conquest, they added a HUD minimap indicator to show you which team actually gets the buff and how long it remains. That's so good because it was so obnoxious when you're like when you're back in the base. Or, or maybe you're like on the other side of the map if you're not if you're in the middle of a fight and you're not looking at the the section up here like where it shows up that you got the buff you're like 
a minute later, you're like, did we get that Pyromancer or not, dog? <laughs> like, nobody knows. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to steal it. So that's good. Um, Battle Pass, nobody cares about. They're just moneying. Uh, console Lobby Chat. That's cool. I don't play on console, but I'm, it's nice that they added that because, I mean, this is nice. <laughs> on a PC UI, players can just click into chat box to type. I was already doing that. I didn't know that was an issue. Players no longer get preview text. Use tab to do the active channels. That's weird. I don't, that doesn't bother me. Nintendo Switch now uses high res names instead of gamer tags. Paul Champ. All right, new ranked split. Split four begins. Players will undergo a soft reset, placing a specific division determined by the end of the split MMR. Pretty much what they did uh, every other time. Nothing special here. Trust me. Uh, reduced conquest ranked queue time. Well, that's good from nine to seven minutes. That's good, actually. Ranked is in a healthier state than it's been in a while, showing MMR and changes to the progression pace. Uh, pacing seem to be going well. We can likely reduce queue time now. Uh, we will watch this and experiment with incremental incremental, and incremental reductions until we find the point or it causes too much of a strain on the matchmaker. So they're going to be um, fixing this from 9 to 7 minutes, reducing it down as much as they can until um, it starts affecting matchmaking. So this should be lowered down a little bit more uh, if they can make it happen without you know fucking up matchmaking they added more bands in all ranked game modes thank jesus thank jesus to this okay instead of eight there's 10 so now that they have 104 103 gods in the game you can now ban almost a tenth of them <laughs> which is so good especially for duel so they added two new um in the first banning phase, two in the in the first banning phase for Joust and Conquest. So instead of banning two, um, and then going through first picks and Conquest, it's three and Joust instead of banning um, two, it's three as well. Because I think they have the same bands. And Duel, now it's just straight up, you get five bands instead of four. It's really good. Um, <clears throat> quicker draft lobbies. That's actually really nice. Decrease pick time because there's a lot of downtime in these lobbies. Recently, there's been a lot of downtime. Um, but it's nice that they they decrease the pick time and the ban time, but they increase the bank time. So if you do actually need that time, you still have it somewhere else. But if not, you know you can't get scared into like accidentally using up all your bank time because you got more of it. So nice um so new item tree arthurian kicking off the mid-season balance we are bringing in a whole new tree of items the arthurian item tree is themed around gem of fate which is crafted into a weapon of legend empowering the wielder at just the right moment each item has a powerful passive effect that activates when the holder finishes casting their ultimate ability and focus on pushing classes that can wield it into specific play styles given how different each god can work with these items we are excited to see the level of experimentation that will come out from the community around these items uh if you haven't already i'm if you haven't already seen it i'm uploading this video here uh, the staff of mirrodin and if you haven't watched the description you should definitely check that out because it's crazy um yeah so that's what this is going to be it's going to have that gem of fate tier one cost 900 gold for 10 percent cooldown reduction honestly not bad you get it right out the gate i know specialist blessing does the same thing for 800 gold but that's also shit so you know this actually builds into stuff um, and then the tier two is one of these three, all of which cost 1600 gold. Um, you either get physical power, 10% cooldown. Obviously, you're going to get 10% cooldown with any of them. 10% um, cooldown, but with uh, honed edge, you're going to get 30 physical power. Apprentice staff, you're going to get 50 magical power. And knight shield, you're going to get 25 of each protection. So the tier threes are where this just gets amazing. So if you're physical or if you're a hunter, and you want to build this um, item out of honed edge it's going to be called fail not which weird name i know but that's what it's called um uh, fail not is a bow of tristan said to never miss this item focused on high power high cooldown and critical strike while not while normally not a standard pairing this item can bridge the gap for ability hunters while providing a heavy critical strike bonus to standard basic attack hunters this however is not only a selfish buff this is important not only a selfish buff as the critical strike chance bonus applies to your allies as well so 
that's crazy, right? Because let's say you're playing Uller, right? A standard ability hunter that also weaves in his auto attacks and wants crit chance. You spend 2,800 gold. You get 20% cooldown reduction. That's fantastic. 50 power. That's on Deathbringer. So that's fantastic. 25% crit chance. That's really good. So you got a lot of crit chance. You got a lot of power and you got cooldown. So all stuff you want um, on ability based hunters, right? Because you want, you, whenever you do auto attack on an ability based hunter, you want that shit to chunk. And this is going to make it chunk. But basically, let's say you're on Uller, right? After finishing casting your ultimate, so you switch stances, your next ability cast within 5 seconds that damages an enemy god marks them, increasing the chance that will be critically struck by 15 seconds. So let's, or by 15% for 10 seconds. Let's say you're playing Uller, you change stances and you axe them, you switch back to your other stance, and you auto them, immediately critting because you have a 40% crit chance at this point, right? Because... It's applied this 15% crit chance for 10 seconds and you already have this 25%. So one item gives you 40% crit chance and 50 power. And if you're in conquest, let's say you're in duo lane, right? You hit this guy with an axe and then your, your mirror walks up and fucking bops him, right? He just bops the shit out of him and crits him because even your mirror has a 15% crit chance. Every god in the game has a 15% crit chance on this target for 10 seconds after you've hit them with an ability. Even mages. It's crazy. It's crazy. Granted, this is only with auto attacks. It's not with abilities, but it's still crazy. Um, and then every single one of these items has can only trigger once every 45 seconds. So that's worth noting. Um, <clears throat> and you got this warrior and assassin item only, which uh, after casting your ultimate ability, it's 55 power, 10% cooldown reduction. It's all right. Um, I don't think the stats match with the gold very well, but it, it, you really get it for the passive, right? After casting your ultimate ability, reveal all enemies within 120 feet of you. While moving towards these revealed targets, in, you gain 30% increased movement speed. That's really good. That's like you're, you're getting Thanatos passive on a low health unit, basically. And just running, you hurl an ass at him for, um, for 8 seconds, I think, right? And these are revealed for eight seconds. So yeah, while they're revealed, you gain 30% increased movement speed while running towards them. Um, and then when they take damage from you for the first time, they take an additional 40 damage, like 40 base, plus 30% of your physical power. So if you're on um, like a Wheelix or like, I don't really know who builds a lot of power in the assassin role, but like, I guess Ravana or Wheelix or something like that, like a jungler. And you just, you catch up to them with this, and then you bop ass with this. It's really going to make that gank super good. So um, if you ult onto them uh, in lane with Ravana, or you jump over and then ult with a Wheelix or something like that, even if you don't pull them, you're going to catch up. You're going to be doing a lot of damage, and that's, I mean, really good because not only... Um, Will you be ganking and doing more damage, catching up and confirming more damage, but enemies will also be revealed for those eight seconds, allowing you to know if you're being counter ganked or um, like snuck up on through the jungle or something, or if you know your solo laner didn't call missing and you're getting fucking smacked by uh, Bologna in three seconds. You know you're gonna know that, so it's gonna be really good vision. So that's probably gonna be an item that's picked up for the passive alone. Um, and then you got. Staff of Mirrodin, crazy ass item, mages, guardians only. Uh, after casting your ultimate ability, your next ability, not ultimate, within the next 10 seconds will have no cooldown, but will also hit for 70% of its normal damage and heal for 70% 70, 70 of its normal healing. That's okay, 70% of uh, a 1,000 because you're going to be chunking on a mage late game. Most of your abilities are going to be doing around 1,000 damage, like Agni Bombs, Hell 3, Hebo 1, uh, I mean, literally, Scylla 2, any, any mage is going to be chunking about 1,000 damage late game. Um, so 70% of 1,000 is 700. So you're just going to be like an extra 700 damage every 45 seconds to just explode that one target that you actually get on. So that's really good. Um, and then Pride Win, I think is how you say it. It's available to all classes. It reduces your cooldown by 20%. It's relatively cheap. It's 2,400. It's a little lo lower than... Um, like Bancroft, which is 2,500, so it's pretty good. 20% uh, cooldown, and then 45 of each protection, which is pretty good because it equals up to 90. And the passive is what's really, you can kind of abuse it 
I was talking to somebody actually about abusing it, but um, after casting your ultimate ability, you gain a large shield equal to your protections for five seconds. When the shield breaks, either by timing out or being depleted, uh, it explodes and deals magical damage equal to 50% of your shield's health and slows the target for 25% for three seconds. So the way you can abuse this is by playing gods like, um, like Fenrir or Hades or something that get double the protections when they alt. So let's say you build full tank Fenrir, you have, you have 300 of each protection, right? You got 600 protection and then you double that bitch when you alt, you have 1200 protections and um and then this thing explodes into magical damage and you're already fenrir so they're going to be building physical not magical protection you have an, a free ass 600 damage just for building this item um so you can really really abuse this item to your advantage and it's i mean it's really good i think this is really i think all of these items have a really good implementation to them somewhere in the game so i mean so far so great um, the, another new item is Contagion. I went over this in that video that I just talked about. Um, it's basically, I don't really have to talk about this much. It's basically just a physical defense counterpart for Pestilence. That's about all that is. Uh, but instead of focusing on HP and defense, it focuses more on mana and HP5, or mana and MP5. Because it does build out of that Breastplate tree. So, um, yeah, it says it right here. Builds from Silver Breastplate. So they changed Demonic Grip just made it they nerfed it a little bit made it up increase on 150 gold which i think is good because it was a little bit too accessible really early in the game a uh, hasten ring i think this is a bad decision they increased it by 400 gold nobody ever bought this shit anyways they increased it by 400 gold and added 20 power to it i personally don't like it but whatever it's just patch notes it's how it goes um do more they reduced the power per stack from six to four but increased the base power from 135 to 145. So you get 10 less power per stack, but you get that power in the base. So it's it's pretty much a buff because you have to stack less, I guess, to get the same amount of power. Um, Spear of Deso changed from one second to two seconds. I mean, everyone bought it anyways. So good, good buff, I guess. Ethereal Staff, really good actually. Lowered the, uh, really good buff, I should say. Lowered the cost from 26 to 2,500 while increasing the uh, amount of health stolen from 5% to 6% if they have a lot of health. So you can actually pair this really well with Soul Reaver now. Uh, just even better because Soul Reaver is so expensive. Now that Ethereal Staff is a little bit cheaper, it's more accessible to kind of pair up. Um, Jade Upper's Crown, they, they buffed it a little bit, gave it 50 health and took away 50 gold. So... Not a huge buff, but if you're going to buy the item, you know, you get a little bit more bang for your buck, I guess. Uh, Hazen Katana got a nerf, which is good. I think it needed one. It was, again, a little too accessible for a uh, super early game. You know, like people were just building first item Hazen Katana. You don't really want that. Uh, Talaria Boots lowered the power, which is good because it's... it's Talaria Boots are for movement, so lowering the power, you are actually sacrificing something. So you have that movement speed increase, which is nice. Um, they buffed Ninja Tabby from 20% attack speed to 25% attack speed, which is really good, which means I don't think there's a reason to buy the other boots anyways. You either want to go speedy or you want to go attack, fa attack fast. I don't think th there's ever really a reason. Um, well, I mean, unless you're a fucking Uller or Ravana, but if you are ever on the fence about attack speed or power, like with Apollo or on her, just go for the attack speed. Because I just think it's better now with this little buff. Um, kin size increase five percent increase in attack speed, which is really it's really good actually because it was it was underbought. I think it was because it didn't give you enough attack speed before um, to real so you could you couldn't really feel it. So now now you can actually feel it. It's really nice. A wind demon a little bit buff to the to the cost. Itchaval really big buff to the cost. One hundred and fifty gold down. That's a big deal. Uh, runic shield got an hp buff i don't know why they buffed these two items they're really good for dual but now they're even going to be better garland of thieves a little bit buff base health from 275 to 300 while also reducing 50 um, health off bulwark of hope actually a pretty big buff 100 gold out of the cost and 50 increase health um just on the item itself which is really nice talisman of energy just have you know increase the the um, duration by two seconds so that you know it actually impacts your fights a little bit 
Relic Dagger. It's actually been picked up quite a bit in the SPL now, so it's a little bit nice that they're kind of buffing it for the more casual players like myself. <laughs> um, increase your Relic cooldown from 30 to 40 seconds, so not, not a whole lot, but a little bit. And now we're onto the gods. AMC got butt fucked. His bees no longer exist. They're out of the game, pretty much. Um, Swarm, they lowered down the damage and the scaling, so his two and his and his passive are uh, a lot lower damage. Well, pretty much a lot lower damage, actually, because you normally build Transcendence Power Boots on AMC because you get so much attack speed from his hives, you don't really need it. Um, and they just nerfed him up a little bit. On her... Ugh, this is, I don't know. I don't, tell me, someone tell me about this. On her received three buffs. His one increases damage stronger in the early game from four to eight, uh, and then eight to 11, and then 12 to 14. And then, yeah, I mean, it, it still ends up at, when you're max level, it's still 20%. So they didn't really buff the late game, but they buffed the early game for the one. So you actually feel that 8% chunk a lot more. And they made it bigger. So, uh... I don't know. They just did. Uh, Impale. They just... Re it's not really... This really isn't a buff, but I guess they put it here as a buff because um, it technically comes out 0 0.03 seconds faster. The 2 does. Um, to better match its animation, which is nice. And then the alt, they... Uh, they they added a targeter while you're, while you're channeling. Da -da 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 -da. They actually added a targeter so you can aim. Which is nice. Because... I'm one of the people that literally misses 8 out of 8 spears when I on her ult. So it's really nice. Um, Apollo got changed a lot. So his passive, which was Audacity, so you could have the, the two auto attacks at once, got changed. Um, and now when he uses a damaging ability, it actually adds two stacks if you hit an enemy god or one stack for an enemy minion. So you stack that passive a whole lot faster. Your one affects it, your three affects it, your alt affects it, everything affects it. Um, and then they buff the two for the duration, or sorry, they buff the three, the duration and the debuff on the enemies. Um, here, they didn't really do anything. Um, they increased his clear a little bit because now his three is always gonna tick for 5% max health on minions, but it's not gonna do anything to gods and it's not gonna do anything to uh, like fire giant and gold fear and shit like that. It's just it's really just to help his laning phase a little bit. Um, Chalk got a little bit of a buff. I I guess like the the torrent from fifteen to thirteen seconds is a huge buff. The storm call I'm not sure because I'm a little bit used to it knocking back. But instead now when you alt instead of knocking them forward or backward wherever they're running they're just gonna get straight knocked up like if Bacchus were to jump on you or something like that. So it's really good for setting up your team now. But in duel, I don't know if, if this is going to be a whole lot better. Um, Erling Shen. Now his one will do less damage. I don't know. They thought it was too strong, I guess. Fafnir got a couple of buffs. Or changes, I should say. His two, I think that's his two, in dragon form got um, a nerf, actually. Pretty hard, huh? Jesus Christ. 5% uh, less attack speed at max rank and 5% less bonus damage at max rank. So that's a little iffy. But the 3, they increased the the width of it, like the, the cone. They increased the cone, so it's a little bit easier to hit, which is nice because I miss that shit all the time. Um, Freya, still a shitty god, I think, because, well, in duel at least, I don't know. Decreased range base damage, so they lowered the base damage by a whole lot from 60 to 40 at max rank. Um, but they increased the scaling, so you're going to be getting that back uh, plus some probably when you're full build. So I can't say this god's name, but uh, Wuz Wuz got a couple of changes. Basically, the passive increased the range from 30 to 40 units, which is just HP 5 if someone dies near you but it's i mean it's good i guess it's still a buff this is crazy <clears throat> this helps me so much because there's so many times i've been playing was was and i use my two and i'm backing up while i'm using it because i want to stun them and i can't detonate it quick enough but they've completely revoked 
any kind of post fire from this ability. So the second that you want to explode it, you can no matter what. And you can um, blow this up, the two, while you're, while you're stunned or while you're dead. So let's say you throw it out and then you get stunned by an Uller Axe, you can, still, you can still blow it up, which you could not do before. And let's say you're playing Conquest, you throw it out and you die, you could still blow it up and try to get that like from the grave kill, which is pretty nice. Um, this, <laughs> this is fucking crazy, okay? This is a huge, huge change, and in my opinion, a huge buff. Um, so basically, Dispel Magic, her three, no longer provides a boost to magical protection. It instead provides a shield to was was and nearby allies. This shield is applied within 40 units of was was or the dispelled target. So I could put this on a, uh, a teammate if I wanted to, or myself, or I could just not, you know, it's whatever. But the shield goes up to 250 at max rank, plus 40% or increased 40% potency per additional target hit. So let's say you all group up um, and she shields you. It's extra 80% because, I mean, it, it caps out at three, right? But... um it's it's so good it's so good I, I think this is a really good change and honestly i think this is a change she needed um and then excuse me her alt does 30 more base damage at all ranks and gets uh instead of gaining uh mitigations it actually just stays at 25 percent pure mitigation at all ranks so it's pretty hefty the alt got pretty buffed um so yeah was was got a pretty big change merlin let's see here what happened to you decreased magical power scaling that's fair decreased magical power scaling and the tick damage that's fair um so the one got nerfed a little bit in void stance the ice stance too the blizzard got a little bit of a time of deploy uh, like uh, 0.2 seconds slower to deploy so it's a little bit of a nerf but i mean it's not a big deal honestly and then the alt is just a longer cooldown so i mean it's max it's still 20 at max rank but it's a longer cooldown in general uh nemesis 3 which, which is her retribution um instead of going up to a 50 percent uh of mitigating or not mitigating but reflecting it just starts at 50 percent, which is amazing and in, instead of going up to 100 percent of the healing it just starts at 100 percent. so the shield is going to keep getting the same like bigger at the same rate but no matter what you're always going to be reflecting 50 percent and healing 100 percent. so it's it's really good this is a really big uh buff <clears throat> um it's a 20 percent buff at at I mean, rank one, so it's crazy. Um, Naja Ring Bounce. Let's see, what does this say? Increased damage reduction of subsequent, of subsequent, subsequent, subsequent hits on the same target. So it actually does more damage if it hits the same target once, but it slows less. But it can stack. Okay. So the slow is halved, but you can stack it if you hit the same person twice. Okay, that's fair. So Nike got changes, okay? Nike blew ass, and everybody knew she blew ass. The only thing good about her was a passive. So we're changing it. <laughs> um, so the one always fires three times, all the time, no matter what. No more two, just use the one, it fires three times, that's really good. The passive bonus power was a little bit nerfed, um, but bonus movement speed, uh, oh, movement speed also was a little bit nerfed as well, actually. I think two victory might be, yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, the two, completely reworked. Completely reworked. Nike conjures a protective barrier in front of her that blocks ranged basic attacks. While channeling the barrier, Nike's, Nike's movement and rotation are limited. Enemies who get near the barrier are damaged and knocked back. At any point, Nike can refire this ability to collapse the barrier and deal damage to enemies in a larger area in front of her. Channels for six seconds. She moves 50% slower while... Uh, channeling but whenever you want it you just refire that thing out and you do damage 
So basically, this is what the damage is going to be when you when you fire it. Pretty hefty damage, and honestly, she could use it. So that's really nice. Um, pulse damage on the shield. This is when you hit uh, if someone like runs into your shield. I think they get knocked back and are and are hit um, without you actually having to do it. So yeah, it's pretty big. Pretty big. 15 second at all ranks, and then mana goes up. Uh, five per rank. All right, pretty good. Her leap is faster, and her alt, I think, this is her alt. Okay, the ability, yeah, it is her alt. The ability no longer goes on cooldown if Nike dies during the warm-up time, and you gain the shield immediately. You don't have to, like, it doesn't burst out and do the AoE, and then you gain the shield, like, come back to you and gain the shield. You just gain the shield immediately and they buffed the shield from 40 percent to um or well, i guess technically 10 percent at all ranks they buffed the shield but also you can't use the two to make it 60 percent, so it's always going to be at this <clears throat> but i think overall really good change to nike really good really good change um raven shout i think is either the three or the one i'm not sure but the cooldown went down four seconds at max rank that's really good oleron let's see what they did here he fixed a bug where the damage fall off did not affect the magical bar scaling increased base damage per shot so he does more damage per shot of his uh of his two which is nice increased magical power, power scaling okay so his two is actually going to chunk Getting, so it's not just something you can walk through like before what I thought she said something. Hitting the same enemy with each shot now deals 20% less damage per shot increased from 10. Okay. So it's not going to chunk. Never mind. So they didn't do anything to it. Never mind. It initially does more damage, but over time we'll do the same amount of damage. So it's fine. Um, Rom, the alt got nerfed actually, but um, shift of the damage each successive shot. So the first two shots are going to actually hit much harder a combined they're gonna hit 35 percent harder um than the other two shots however it's nerfed in general so i don't know I, more of a change i think and less of a nerf or a buff scotty oh god don't even get me fucking started by that i fucking hate this god so <clears throat> Calder, the Winter Wolf, aka the two, aka the passive. If Calder has zero HP, aka you kill Calder and actually have a chance to win, Scotty gains 10% physical power. Sick. Also, Calder regens two seconds faster than before. So that's super sick. <clears throat> Basically, if you're actually left in a 1v1 scenario instead of a 2v1 with your Calder pet, you just frag a lot harder. So that's cool. But also, the alt, which is Winter's Grasp, as everyone knows, the snowstorm surrounds Scotty as she chooses a location for Calder to attack. That's right. You can throw him. <laughs> you can just, instead of needing Calder to be next to someone, you toss that thing, and he lands on something. And uh, it's the same alt other than that. Same damage, same persistence, same root, same everything. It's just that you can toss him, and he's immediately at full health. And when he lands, he does his shit. And then uh, there's still actually a couple more. I thought this was going to be the last one. Thor got some changes. So uh, one, a pretty big buff, but they said it's just an, uh, like a like a bug, is when you hit someone at max range or max range with the one, instead of it ticking once, it will do both. Like it'll do the the double damage. So that's really good because I've done that quite a bit, and it drops kills more often than not. So um, that's really good. Uh, we're gonna skip over the three real quick and go to the alt. After Thor lands from his ultimate, his hammer, Mjolnir, is infused with lightning for six seconds. During this buff state, each of his basics and abilities apply chain lightning to enemy gods, damaging them with each hit. Initial damage, you know, with the with the punch boy, you get an additional 60% per punch or ability, whatever, um, plus 15% physical power, and then it's chained to others for half damage. So, pretty good. And then we're going to go back to this. So instead of Thor spinning with his three um, being knockup immune, he's still knockup immune, 
Um, but instead of it spinning and doing six ticks of damage, I believe, it now spins and does three if you're in front of him or two if you're behind him. The final swing will do extra damage. So it's um, it basically spins twice, and then the third spin is like a, like a sweeping auto attack that does increased damage. Um, they lowered the cooldown. They lowered the mana cost. This is what the damage scaling is going to be um, per hit. And this will be the final damage swing. So you can pause the video and, and look at that. It's pretty crazy. Uh, pretty, pretty big change there. Um, and this is another, another big change for Thoth, actually. Each time an enemy god is hit by this ability, the ability's cooldown is reduced by one second. Crazy, right? Because that's his one. Hieroglyphic Assault is his one. So you, if you hit all three, you lower your cooldown by three seconds just by doing it. This can only proc once per ability fire. Okay, never mind. It's one second. We're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, damage reduced per shot. This is, this is weird, though. Because damage reduced per shot by five plus five percent um, of your magical power. However, each... Uh, subsequent shot will do 20% extra damage so if you hit all three if you're really good at aiming Thoth's one and you hit all three you're gonna be doing an extra 60% damage you know 20% for each shot so and there's three of them oh I guess 40% because the first one doesn't apply whatever it doesn't matter you're gonna be doing a lot of damage increased damage with with him if you're good with him this is a pretty damn huge buff Ravana they reduce the cooldown by two two seconds of his three. It's pretty good. More root, whatever. And then uh, Zeus, they added text to show the duration of the charge. And now the um, <clears throat> there's a delay when he detonates. So you know how normally his animation, he like grabs up in the air and pulls down. It's supposed to detonate when he pulls down, but it detonated up here. So they fixed the animation basically. So he pulls down and detonates. So yeah, that's all of the mid-season patch notes. Um, 37 minute long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I actually really liked going over patch notes and uh, learning everything there is to learn about the new patch. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.